屋さん。Hello, and welcome to Beast Recaps channel. In this video, we're gonna tell you the storyline of a movie called 47 Ronin from the year 2013. Telling us a story in feudal Japan, where a band of samurai, led by Kai and Oishi, seeks to avenge their master's death and restore honor by embarking on a perilous journey to defeat the treacherous Lord Kira and his powerful witch ally, Mizuki. So, without further ado, let's get watching. The film begins by narrating ancient feudal Japan, where witches and samurai coexisted. The land was governed by a shogun, and those samurai who failed their masters faced the shame of becoming ronin. To comprehend the legend of the 47 ronin, one must delve into its backstory. A young boy named Kai is discovered in the woods by a group of samurai. His head bears claw marks, and tensions arise when one samurai, Oishi, attempts to submerge Kai's face in water. Kai fights back, seizing Oishi's sword. Their leader, Lord Asano, chooses to bring Kai to their province, Akio. As time passes, Kai develops a bond with Mika, Lord Asano's daughter. However, the other samurai hold animosity towards Kai because he is a half-breed. Years later, an adult Kai encounters the samurai in the forest. They come under attack from a colossal beast adorned with massive antlers. The creature rampages through the woods, endangering Samurai Yasuno. Kai seizes Yasuno's sword and impales the beast's chest while being dragged along. Eventually, the beast succumbs to its injuries. Kai returns the sword to Yasuno, but the samurai disrespects him due to his mixed lineage. Yusuno takes a piece of the beast's antler. From a distance, Kai notices a white fox with a golden eye and a blue eye. Upon the samurai's return, Mika anxiously seeks out anyone who may have been injured. Her father, Lord Asano, understands her concern and knows exactly whom she is searching for. Mika eventually finds Kai in a different location, discovering a wound on his back. She gently tends to it, using a rag to clean the injury. Kai acknowledges the impossibility of their union due to his non-royal blood and mixed heritage as a half-breed. Lord Kira, the ruler of a rival province, arrives in AKO accompanied by a witch named Mizuki as they prepare for the shogun's visit. Kai recognizes Mizuki among the concubines and notices her peculiar eyes. He reports his suspicions to Oishi, his new master. However, Oishi dismisses it as Kai merely being captivated by a beautiful woman. A battle ensues with one of Kira's men, known as the Lovecraftian Samurai. Yusuno is designated to fight him, but Kai and Oishi's son, Chikara, discover that Yusuno has been bewitched, evident from his milky eyes. Kai dons red armor and a mask, challenging Kira's samurai to a duel. Despite his valiant efforts, Kai is ultimately defeated, and his mask is forcefully removed, revealing his identity to everyone present. The Shogun orders the samurai to execute Kai, but Lord Asano intervenes, taking responsibility for Kai's actions. As a consequence, Kai is brutally beaten until he loses consciousness. During this tumultuous time, Mizuki senses a vulnerability in Lord Asano. She extracts a purple liquid from Kira's arm and breathes upon it, giving rise to a spider-like creature. Sneaking into Asano's room while he sleeps, she releases the spider, which crawls over his face and deposits the liquid into Asano's mouth, enchanting him. Asano, under the spell, hallucinates Mika's distressing screams and imagines Kira assaulting her. In a fit of rage, Asano strikes his sword into Kira's back. However, he is quickly subdued by others as the bewitchment dissipates, revealing the truth that Kira had not harmed Mika. As a consequence of his attack on the unarmed Kira, Lord Asano is sentenced to death by the Shogun. In order to maintain the honor of their clan, Asano chooses to perform seppuku, a ritual suicide. He entrusts Oishi with the responsibility of protecting Mika, his daughter. The ceremony proceeds, with Asano donning a white robe as a symbol of his impending death. Kai, still recovering from his beating, senses that something is amiss, but he is not present during the ceremony. Mika witnesses her father thrust a blade into his own stomach, and Oishi, filled with sorrow, beheads his master. 
The shogun proclaims the samurai as ronin, masterless warriors. Two women offer Mika a vial of poison, suggesting that she should end her suffering, but she defiantly states that AKO has not yet fallen. Before departing, the shogun grants Mika a year-long mourning period before she is to be married to Kira. He also prohibits Oishi and the samurai from seeking revenge for their master's death. Taking advantage of the situation, Kira orders his men to throw Oishi into a pit, fearing retaliation. A year later, Oishi is rescued from the pit by his wife Riku and Chikara. They attend to his wounds and inform him that Kira plans to marry Mika soon. Meanwhile, Kai has been sold into slavery in a Dutch town. Oishi ventures into the town and discovers Kai engaged in a duel with a deformed man. Kai emerges victorious, decapitating his opponent to the cheers of the onlookers. Oishi intervenes, creating the impression that another duel is about to take place. The two engage in a sword fight until Oishi informs Kai of Mika's desperate need for his assistance. Together, they escape, determined to save Mika from her impending marriage to Kira. Kai and Oishi rally the remaining ronin and make a solemn vow to avenge their master by bringing Kira to justice. Oishi takes charge, obtaining a map that leads them to a village where they hope to acquire swords. However, the sword makers in the village, who are loyal to Kira, refuse to provide them with weapons. Kai joins forces with the ronin and assists them in a skirmish against the sword makers before guiding them to an alternative location where they can secure swords. Kai leads the ronin to a temple belonging to the Tengu, a supernatural entity. He warns Oishi not to draw his sword under any circumstances, regardless of what he witnesses. While Kai engages with the Tengu Lord, Oishi remains in the presence of the other Tengu. When one ronin defies the warning and draws his sword, the Tengu attack, but Oishi stays true to his word and refrains from using his weapon. Kai successfully retrieves the sword and informs Oishi that they have passed the test, as what they saw was an illusion and their men are unharmed. Meanwhile, Mizuki, disguised as a geisha, infiltrates a nearby village and seduces one of the ronin. Shortly after, the ronin stumble upon the village and are ambushed. Mizuki unleashes her firepowers, joining forces with Kira's men and the Lovecraftian samurai in a brutal battle against the ronin. The ronin suffer heavy losses, some falling victim to Mizuki's flames. In the midst of the chaos, Mizuki seizes Oishi's sword and retreats. Kai and Oishi tend to the surviving ronin, mourning the loss of their fallen comrade Basho. Oishi expresses regret for not pursuing Kira immediately following their master's death. Mizuki, while Mika is asleep, visits her room and taunts her by claiming that Kai, Oishi, and the other ronin have met their demise. She slips a knife to Mika, stating that she won't harm her but whatever actions Mika takes are of no concern to Mizuki. Before the ronin prepare for their final confrontation, Yusuno expresses his remorse to Kai for his previous disrespect and expresses gratitude for saving him from the beast. He offers Kai a sword and bows to him. All the ronin then sign their names on a scroll, marking it with their blood to symbolize their commitment to avenging their master. Oishi declares, we are now 47. On their journey back to AKO, they encounter a group of performers who recognize Oishi and the ronin from their previous visit. Oishi pleads for their assistance. Kai and Oishi infiltrate AKO with the performers, taking advantage of the wedding ceremony between Kira and Mika. The remaining ronin scale the walls and eliminate Kira's guards. Oishi disguises himself and approaches Kira, leading to a fierce battle between the ronin and Kira's men. Amidst the chaos, Kira escapes with Mika, and Mizuki slips away unnoticed. The Lovecraftian samurai attempts an attack but is defeated when a ronin throws a bomb, resulting in a devastating explosion that destroys the formidable warrior. 
As Kira and Mika flee, she brandishes the knife given to her by Mizuki and lunges at Kira. With the arrival of guards, Mika seizes the chance to escape. Oishi confronts Kira and engages in a fierce battle. Meanwhile, Kai and Mika reunite, seeking solace in each other's embrace. However, Mizuki appears, cornering them. Kai fearlessly faces her, despite her warnings. Mizuki transforms into a monstrous serpent-like dragon, attacking Kai as he draws his sword to defend himself. Despite facing numerous near-death moments, Kai's determination drives him to retaliate. He impales Mizuki's head with his sword, causing her to revert to her human form just before her demise. In another location, Oishi's confrontation with Kira reaches its climax within a room. Oishi holds a knife to Kira's stomach, emphasizing the magnitude of his master's courage. He stabs Kira and swiftly decapitates him. Oishi presents Kira's severed head to the onlookers, marking the end of the battle. The Ronin, having avenged Lord Asano's death, journeyed to his grave, allowing him to finally rest in peace. <laughs> Oishi approaches the Shogun and acknowledges their crimes, humbly requesting that his men be respected for their actions. The Shogun, recognizing the honor in their pursuit of vengeance for Lord Asano, acknowledges their deeds. Although their crimes are punishable by hanging, the Shogun grants them the option of committing honorable suicide. Oishi and Mika shed tears as they accept their fate. Kai and Mika share a poignant moment before their final parting. They pledge to find each other in the next life, cherishing one last kiss before their paths diverge. The solemn ceremony for the Ronin seppuku takes place, each samurai fulfilling their honorable duty. However, the shogun makes a surprising decision. He calls out Chikara, Weishi's son, and spares his life, allowing him to carry on the bloodline of his father and continue their lineage. As Kai and Mika exchange one last glance, he resolutely plunges the knife into his own stomach. Later, Mika stands on a bridge, reading a heartfelt message from Kai. The message reiterates his unwavering promise to search for her in whatever world she may reside in next. The narrator concludes by stating that the legend of the 47 Ronin persevered through generations. The final text on the screen informs viewers that every December 14th, thousands gather at the graves of the Ronin to honor their remarkable deeds. The film serves as an inspired tribute to their extraordinary story. And the movie finally ended. What do you think of the recap? Please let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay updated with more exciting content. Thank you all for your support, and until next time.